I got uh, issues with, um, so let's see, Carla is here, Spock is here, Krishi's here, Mike is here, it says here. Yes, and uh, who do I have to play? I don't know. I've seen you. That's it. Uh, okay. Uh, let me test the audio a little bit. Um, no, I can't hear this one. So I think. Uh, one one six nine twenty. I guess we are okay. Um, I'll write the names a little later. Meanwhile, I'm gonna start sharing. Uh, I'm sorry, chat. Oh, I know that the question I was going to ask yesterday. So thank you, sorry for being late. Uh, time is like 8.50 or so, 53 local time. But here's the question, if you can hear me, I would like you to tell me which word is pronounced incorrectly by the vast majority of the uh, Ivy League graduates. <laughs> it's just a joke, so. Um, <laughs> Okay, we got something in the chat. So the question was, it is okay, thank you so much. I don't know, that sounds very good. Um, so then in principle, it is um, excellent, Ahmad. Uh, in fact, not just those people are correct, pr pronouncing correctly and correctly. Almost everybody, it's, that's the way it's pronounced. Um, that's the joke. Um, Elmas is, seems a little disappointing. Very good. For Elman, I have another question. Chairman. <laughs> no, 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 no. But um, um, the question for Elman would be, that, look, that I'm trying to get a question before we get started, is uh, what's the number of, wait, what's the number of letters in the correct answer to this question? Mm -hmm. Say again. What's the number of letters in the correct answer to this question? To this question? Yeah. So, let me see. What's... Um, <laughs> The number of letters in the correct, that is correct, oh, that's good. one good answer, in the correct answer to this question. So, Christina, there's a second uh, potential answer. Um, the, the, the second, so first of all, four is the right answer, because if it has to be a number, and if we're speaking English, we can try any word, like 12, but 12 doesn't have 12 categories. So you have to find a word that reflects a number which has exactly the same number of letters. So four is the only one. Four has four letters. Three okay. has five letters. Four, five. four letters. Work. Yeah, so so then <laughs> what's the number of letters? Four. Okay, that sounds, that checks out. But the I think the original joke was as follows, and we're, we're gonna wrap it up. I'm glad that some people hear me. And um, look, it would be something like this. What's the number of letters in, and then I put this, so you can count them. Uh, count those in sorry. the double quote, and then you get the answer. It's just another silly question, right? Um, I'm gonna close the meeting chat, thank you so much. Thank you. Local time is now 8.55. And um, this is the end of week number, not yet, but close. The, the end of week number four. So I'm going to close the time, and I'm gonna go instead of C290, uh, which I cannot get to, because it doesn't remember. And now I uh, guess I'm not logging into uh, Gmail. Although sometimes it asks me, yeah, see, well, good enough. I have classes over here. And um, now I can go wherever I wanna go. And I'm just gonna stay here. So the one thing that I have to do is I am going to go into Gmail, which is, um, because I need to write some notebook today. I have two different notebooks. So I'm gonna say sign in and uh, I'm gonna minimize this video. You know what, I'm gonna to try to stop my video because it will, um, sometimes it shows it's shifted on uh, twice on the iPad. So I'm just gonna say, if anybody needs video, uh, we're gonna turn it on. So I'm gonna say, this is the account associated with the, um, uh, G GitHub's um, and then I'm going to say next and I'm going to have to type the password that I usually mess up 
So let's see, uh, password should be this one. And I push the button. I think today we have two appointments. Um, and one is at 2 o'clock, and the other one is 12 30, I suppose. Uh, and I will confirm this at the, before we end today. So, Google? No, I want Google to pull out. And then when I get to this place, I'm, I think I'm all set up for a new notebook. And I'm just going to say new notebook. Um, I'm not yet ready to do anything in the notebook, but we will in a second. The Georgia page moves this out. I don't need the inbox here. That's fine. And I guess let's get started. So today I have one very big goal, which is to go through the, um, I want to go through the global exercise. And I will. Um, and then I would like to uh, also catch up with some of the things that I promised, specifically the linear algebra section. Uh, we, we should talk about linear algebra. Maybe we'll start with that. It's not going to go slow. Um, it's going to go fast, but there is a reason. Uh, there is a reason for for uh, actually talking now about linear algebra, because yesterday we went over the, uh, the purpose, the meaning of matrices in um, our circuits, and uh, what we did yesterday was to take uh, uh, to review the fact that every every single gate has a matrix, and when you create a circuit, you're actually multiplying matrices to create a an, an equivalent matrix uh, that represents the entire circuit. And uh, what is the first uh, uh, implication of that? And how can it help us in any way? The answer is it can produce um, simple proofs that uh, some circuits are um, uh, equivalent to others. Um, all we have to do is to reduce the circuit to a matrix. All right, so now suppose that today we are going to do Grover. And that is a circuit that has three parts, uh, preparation of state, and then the oracle, and then you have uh, uh, the reflection part. And you realize that the whole thing can be reduced to a matrix. And all you have to do to verify that Grover, as described by Gene or us, is in fact working, you just take that matrix and multiply with the uh, vector zero, zero. And then the answer is um, uh, what you expect the oracle to recognize in one step. Because uh, for the size of input that we have, one iteration is enough. So today is July 12. <clears throat> okay, so I. I'm not at this. I don't see the video. I'm not entirely sure if this is up to date. I'll give it to you. I have several. Little... <laughs> this will throw it. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll say it all together. So, a, we had a, we, we show, where can I show? Um, so if you go to Amazon and you click on this, then uh, you get biscuit pocket guide. And um, that's the book I gave to Elmar just now. On account that he went online and he looked at the documentation, anything he checked online probably is up to date. The book that he has right now, which is this one that you're looking at, may or may not be outdated. Uh, I got them last year, 2023. The book is from 2022. Correct. I mean, so it may be even older. Um, but the good thing about the book is that it does uh, try to be from time to time a tutorial. I have another one, which I'm not going to share, but uh, I want you to be aware of it. Q Shop has a pocket guide, which is written by our um, colleague Maria Mikhailova from Microsoft. And as I said, she has, in fact, started putting together a book. Uh, let me go to Manning now. And I, uh, so the Manning uh, Early Access uh, Program, I have to post two resources. One is Fund Information by Jake Jager. I guess I can just quickly be, be show you that. Um, despite going into C219 in the past, and specifically, I'm going to go into the past in the summer of 2022. And, um, you might say, well, why are you taking us there? I'm going to go to, I guess, uh, 18. Okay, so uh, maybe I type my password, and if I go to Jay, this is a book for a lot of information, and if you look at the table of contents, um, it has a number of... Um, uh, it has a number of uh, topics which are uh, mapping on to what we are going to do next week. So it says qubits and then measurements and uh, 
what's that normal locality? What's the interferometry doing with here? Um, but 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 you see how uh, that is what um, what was in the first guest lecture. Classical information communication, quantum information, quantum entanglement, and what I like very much is that we have here what um, we have. What do we have? Entanglement swapping and entanglement purification. So, as far as quantum communication is concerned, this book has a, a few protocols that we are not going to discuss uh, because I don't find them to be quantum advantage. On the other hand, they're so specific to uh, this quantum field that uh, they need to be discussed, but they are not giving you an advantage on account that there's nothing like it uh, on the other side. So if I discuss three topics of quantum entanglement, such as uh, teleportation, super coding, and GAC gain, um, you can try to play those classically, and then you have a limitation. I mean, it's hard to say teleportation of a quantum state classically is kind of difficult to explain what that might be. Um, but, but it's a very specific process that also is done in general with any state, regardless of what the state is. So I think it goes into the quantum advantage. Well, I can tell you, for example, if you have a state, a classical state, and I ask you to please send it somewhere, um, then you're going to say it's not exactly clear how I'm going to do that, or how exactly does it happen, and then I compare with the quantum teleportation of the state, and then there is uh, an argument that that looks like an advantage. But when it comes to entanglement swapping over here, which I always regret not discussing, but we should in some sense at some point, very briefly, uh, that is an interesting phenomenon where two particles that never saw each other, never interacted, at some point become entangled. And that, I think, is not an advantage in any particular sense, but it is a property or a subroutine or a kind of feature that you can benefit from. Um, and I'm glad that this is um, listed over here. And, um, and that's basically the book where it ends with uh, Grover, Deutsch, Shore, and Simon. Simon is the original algorithm that Shore was inspired by. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this is the, the book that I'm going to post, and then I'm going to go to Manning Publishers. And um, I probably showed you how we had a uh, full day pre symposium event at 60 2020 um, that we need to know if this was going to happen. We proposed a workshop and they rejected it. And then later I found out Microsoft beat up to it, which is given their resource, of course. Um, and, and then I said, look, uh, your, it's, your conference is expanding. So how about you give us a pre symposium event? Because I had one in 2016 and it was very successful. So they did give it to us. And then we had it and I showed you the videos and everything else. And, um, uh, and when we finished it, full day, right? Then the conference was canceled after we finished. So uh, I'm gonna say no thanks. And now I'm going to go to, uh, so one of the pre person who came up uh, and presented at the last minute was this lady from Microsoft who, as I said, I met her in September at IEEE one week again. And then she, we talked about stuff that she did and we didn't, uh, she says, I'm writing a book. I said, well, don't you have these guys? I think, no, these are live, live projects. These are not books. I'm not writing a book for good. So this is a book. Book is about Q Sharp. So this is the uh, specific uh, programming language, not Qiskit, but Q Sharp that Microsoft is using. And um, I said, where's your book? And she says, I only have two chapters. When I have three chapters, then it will be appearing in, uh, in uh, uh, Manning Early Access uh, project. Uh, and I click and now the book is there. I mean, I, I paid for it. And I will show you the three chapters, uh, I'll post them over this weekend. So there's an ebook and you can subscribe and whatnot. Three or eight chapters again. So the, the idea behind this is that she wants to explain to people, though she's going to use QShop, but then she also refers to QKISKIT. Uh, she wants to explain roughly how you go about developing these algorithms. Okay, even, even Grover. So you have to admit, uh, I have to admit that if you look into uh, our booklet, the, the little Qubitsa, what you see is um, uh, actual cases which are then proved by using a formalism which we extend. Um, but how exactly did Grover get the idea? See, that I don't explain in general. It's, it's difficult to say, well, how did he get the idea? 
there is a quantum algorithm zoo, but it's not as exciting or uh, clear as the classical algorithm zoo, which we have many more of those. And so the purpose of this book is in fact, to try to um, give you some intuition and I will share this with you and, um, and you will know about it. So I have two more resources to post and these are the resources. So I'm glad her book came out uh, uh, two weeks ago and she's right here. Uh, but then I say, for example, yesterday I, I told you that the major said whatever, and uh, if I go into one of the GitHubs, um, not in resources, but in students, um, some of the things that we did yesterday uh, were uh, we worked and worked in a, a different way or better way by Christina, and I think maybe I can share quickly the notebook if I can find it. So I have to go and see the 12, and then the password is the other one again. And I'm not sure exactly, but let's say uh, she put it in July 11th. So these are things that she did yesterday as we went through the thing in class uh, with capture and stuff. Can't come that much. Um, then she wrote a bunch of um, uh, functions. Some of them are a little bit more general and better than uh, than uh, uh, the ones we did in class. But you can write them in any way. What in way? This is the point that you can uh, calculate the matrix uh, for any circuit, and then you can compare them, and then you say they are the same. Um, and and so uh, this is an exercise that we didn't solve, but then she solved, so great. Um, good work. So then I'm gonna come back and say this all about uh, matrices. And I also told you, look at the very bird, uh, look at the first three or four chapters, look at the one with three or four chapters, matrices everywhere. And now I'm come back and I say, what I promise you, and the thing is I promised you that I would solve the linear algebra section, which I finally kind of did. Um, so if I go into C290 quantum, <laughs> Uh, then um, I guess I'm going to say, where's the thing to highlight quiz? I'm going to come here and I'm going to say highlights quiz. Okay. Um, I click on, I guess, like so. And um, in the beginning, when people saw this, they said, oh, that's, I guess, the sound that they made. Because we were hoping not to do that much math, math, but then the math just by itself is sometimes soothing. So you don't know that people are going to immediately reject this, but I'd say the vast majority will, will be a little bit taken back by this, and you shouldn't. And um, complex numbers is what we're working on now, say. It's an optional assignment, and it would be for this week, so I probably will post it next week. We still have two weeks. Then there is this one where we didn't solve it completely, but I said you should be going into um, cubism, and I, uh, I'm going to open this here. And the idea is to state and solve the cube factory paradox from cubism. Let me show you. This is the book. I don't know if you guys have access to it. And if you don't, tell me. Uh, and um, maybe this is the third book that I have to post. And I'm going to go and say, um, the cube paradox. Uh, very briefly, at least, um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I don't know. So let me see a cube factor. Let's see if I can find it. I have to spell factory right. And there you go. Consider the baffling paradox. Let me read this to you so you know what the, the deal is. <clears throat> Your assumptions are always very important. Your assumptions oftentimes are implicit or tacit. In that case, you don't know what you're going to expose yourself. So be careful because of this problem. Remember this problem. Read it, understand it, and then remember it. So this was based on whatever puzzles we're talking about by this guy in 89. Um, imagine a pottery factory that spits out a huge pile of small ceramic cubes. That's what you are being told. The edges of these cubes are randomly distributing the length from zero to one centimeter. You pick out one of these cubes at random and examine it. What is the probability that the edge of your cube measures between zero and a half centimeter. And um, he says, a, you could say one half, but wait. And he calculates, uh, and then um, he, he comes up with one quarter, but then it gets even worse because if you decide to go by volumes, then um, you get one of one eighth. So then he says this problem uh, has three different answers. And that's very unsettling. And it seems like a paradox. And um, 
Uh, if, if you ask this question, then he says the problem has no solution. Why doesn't it have any solution? Because you don't know what the assumptions are. So in a real case, you have to take into account the actual manufacturing process. And that generates the probability with which you would get, get a cube that's only half. Um, the side is half, uh, up to one half. Uh, so he says that the cube factory is a very strong reminder that probability is a is a is a short mathematical tool that needs to be used with care in the real application. So I am going to say that this is a very interesting, not paradox, but kind of paradoxical situation because it really emphasizes, kind of like in the Monty Hall problem, uh, that if you are not aware of your assumptions, then you are going to get an answer that may be one of many possible answers. Um, so. Probabilities, complex numbers, and finally linear algebra. Linear algebra has 18 problems, and I have put together 14. 14. So the question is, how can I show you um, where they are? Um, the very first thing that I have to do is I have to go back to the very beginning, where I have the link uh, to the document that has these problems. Uh, I chose problems that you can learn from. Um, and if you scroll through this, the first chapter is uh, Basically, there's some forward uh, encouragements and whatnot uh, describes the other complex numbers. Okay, for next so next week, linear algebra starts on 27. I'm going to click on 27, and the style that you've seen before is that uh, it is explained as clearly as possible with diagrams and whatnot. And every single time where we have an example, I took that and made it a problem. But you know that if you come back here, that example is uh, explained. So I want you to, to examine them and actually experience them as problems and then come back here and say, I couldn't do it. How do you do it? Or I did this, is it correct? Or is my solution correct, but different from the one in here? And so that, that puts a lot of pressure on you, I think. And um, I also postponed doing this. So I imagine that you would react the same way. And um, also, I thought I should do it in more than one way, which actually slowed me down even further. I really didn't want to get started. Well, eventually I got to get started and I finished almost all of it, but still not all of it. And you know, you're, there's always something else that you would rather do than um, the thing that you said you would be doing. So in this case, I kept doing other things consistently until today I am ready to share with you the first 15. Um, you might also have trouble finding them. So I'm going to show you where they are and then we'll move on. So. Look, this is an example, it's the first example. Okay, now I don't know exactly if this is an example that I put inside here, but the first one says, um, add the vectors i over two and three negative 100. So um, I'm gonna come back over here and say, what do you think is that? So I'm gonna click on 24 and I say 24 has something that we can class, so no. 25 says, uh, is a diagnostic quiz. And you got used to the fact that I could do uh, symbolic, Manipulation, yeah, why don't I do this? But, uh, copy, uh, put it in here. This is not part of the thing that we just discussed. Um, but I probably have to, although I have um, symbolic processing, I suppose so. After this is finished, either will complain or it will actually say something. Here's an equation, a system of equations being solved. I got some good, right? Because you have to read what that is, square root of six with a minus of over three, and then square root of three over three, that's a vector. And the other vector is square root of six over three and minus square root of three over three. But but um, but this works. In other words, you can calculate the answer to a solution to a system of equations. Um, and I put this in the diagnostic quiz. Um, so diagnostic quiz is here, it does whatever it does. And I'm gonna come back and I say, let's go to 26. 26 has pictures from, this is a long time ago, June 26. Pictures from the book, 27 says, um, today we implemented Bernstein Vazirani, I didn't put anything else over there, 28, that's week number two with a bunch of questions. And so some of the meetings that we had that week were about those questions on July 1st. And it says, oh, look, that's question one from linear algebra. Great, because what I would like to do is to quickly put everything in up to question 14, upload as week four to Grover. So I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna say, what am I doing now? This here has two parts. So be, please be careful. The first part is supposed to be actual text. So you're gonna say, give me a text and put this in. And we've done this already. Um, and then this part, throw it away. And then I come here and I say, there is some code that goes with this. 
And the code says I could use two arrays and then I calculate the sum of the two. And the answer should be whatever I find on page 2.1. So this is example 2.1 on page 32, which apparently is exactly the same thing I showed you. I seems to be. Okay, so everywhere, this is what's happening. Wolfram Alpha, if you just want to do it for a third possible way, um, it would go like this. Okay, so it's important for you to, to expose yourself to this and learn from it. Uh, uh, and that says, look, you, you are doing this, it comes up as this, I plus D over negative uh, 98. So that's exactly 3 plus I over negative 98. That's my first one. And then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to say, I'm happy with what I have. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to say, I also have a question two. Question two is <clears throat> what you could write on in LaTeX, just as if it was a paper. Um, and uh, it looks good. And uh, you could actually write more than uh, that I really uh, didn't have time to do. So um, I say this is ridiculous because this is a code uh, entry and I'm going to take it out and I'm going to put a text. I need a text. And you got to be careful with that too. But you see how I would, I would save you a lot of time if you just um, get the right entries and then copy what I gave you. Uh, you will be able to do things in no time. Uh, still takes that because I give you three different ways of doing it. So here you can start calculating. No, I'm sorry, uh, typing in and say the first element will be three plus two. That's a five. The next one on the first row is going to be three minus one, which is two. Negative one plus two i plus i is going to be one plus three i. Uh, you can do it by hand and then write it down. So I say this is ex example 2.4 on page 36, which you can come over here and say, where's page 26? It's soon. I skip all of this for the purpose of what I'm talking about. But at the same time, you should uh, not, right? In principle, at least, if you have the time. Why don't you read and then stop, take a break with exercise, uh, with, with the example 2.4. I told you that it's going to be three plus two, five, and then three minus one, two, and this one is negative one plus three i. So when I calculate using NumPy or using uh, Wolfram Alpha, I should be able to see this guy. So I'm gonna come back to, um, I'm not sure where, maybe the key. And I say, the only thing that I have here is the NumPy example. This is, we've done this before, but listen, we're going to go through the first 15 very quickly. Uh, at least you know where they are. You'll see where they are. They will appear on the video. People watch the recording later. They'll see what they are. So this is the actual code. You'll import NumPy. You shouldn't have to because you did it before, but but I imported it by mistake, so to speak. Um, you don't have to because it's already imported from, the, from earlier. And then you have A and B, and you add them up. And when you run this, you get that, and you say, wait a minute, I don't like the fact that it's J. Um, and I say, well, okay, we'll work on that in a second. Uh, J is really I, and you can't put a J unless you have a coefficient. So if you have just I, you have to say one J, as I did over here. When you go to Wolfram Alpha, not a problem. They will actually use, I mean, they, they, do, they do better stuff here, yeah, right? They look for people. You say you have these two things, and it looks like this. It looks exactly as we decided that we had it over here. And so I'm happy, and this is now number one and number two uh, problems in this thing. And I would say this is seven, July 1st, and I'm going to go to July 2, second. July 2 says, uh, hey, look, one and two, you just saw that, right? I have three, four, five, six, seven here. So let's go over three, four, five, six, seven. I have until 14, uh, but it's in different places. So one, we don't do it anymore. Two, we just did it. Three. For three, I'm going to say, I would like to tell you something first. And so um, the you see how honestly I'm saving you time and yet it still feels like it's very slow and time consuming. Um, I, imagine how much longer it took me when I typed it from scratch. So first for question three, I don't like this. Um, I thought that for question three, I already put this See, I told you I have CDO, which is OCD with the letters properly arranged in alphabetical order. Um, otherwise, why would I be bothered by not having um, the um, bold? <clears throat> so then, first, I would like you to understand that if you are bothered by the fact that the matrices that we produce are not, don't look good, and yet those, the one we did yesterday, did look good. It turns out that we can work this out. So code is going to say, watch what happens now. Wow, this is a good looking matrix. Wow. So, right? Better. Um, it is using this as well. So I'm going to say, wonderful. 
Okay, so as long as this exists, that's why I put here, and I, I'm bothered by the fact that online I forgot to put a star star, but then later on I put it everywhere. So anyway, I'm sorry, and you can put it. And uh, I'm going to come back over here and say, well, then now let's do the problem. And I think that you will be presently surprised. I mean, it's not that big deal, seriously. But uh, if I go and say, give me a new code and, and put this in, <coughs> watch what happens with the imaginary i in the matrix. It shows up as i, even though it's j in NumPy. But it's j because of the electronics engineers use j. So, but but uh, it's J, uh, and we thought of it as being I. So then, when it comes into symbolic processing, I comes back. But you're right. You're absolutely right. So if you had any problems with J, now I mean, are you saying that it would be good to keep J? I mean, it's J because when you parse code, you see the J better than the I because the I could look like a one. That's the reason. If you use ASCII, look, it doesn't look like here. Well, everybody uses ASCII. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> kind, of, kind of. Okay, so, yeah, so as an exercise, uh, I'm going to say I, I used to have this exercise in, this is in Java, but it could be, I think, so I don't mind, if I were to calculate one, two, three, but it's in Java, okay, four, five, plus five, four, three, two, uh, what do you think is this sum in Java? In Java, yeah. Well, it should be six, 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 six. It was six, 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 right? But it's not because the last one is an L. That's the point that you're making. Yes. So in Java, if you type uh, that, you get something off. So in class, I actually say, okay, folks, let's do this. One, two plus two, one, and let's say it should be three, three, and it's actually fourteen, and that's because the L at the end in Java makes two a long uh, constant. Long time. So people are so sure of what they see, even though because of the like you just said, J I could look but L even worse. That I had people in large and who were saying, I typed it on my computer and it gave me my answer. Say, what did you type? You typed <laughs> what you thought you saw. <laughs> you didn't type what I typed. And then I have to change the font and so on. So this is a, there's a book called Java Puzzles that has, this is the simplest thing in that book that I want to show you. About. But it is relevant because you really shouldn't trust what you see. You should always doubt yourself. Not a lot like me, but just a little bit. So Java Puzzles gives, uh, uh, I don't know what's Pence Java. This is a book, all right? And it's a really nice like this, um, a book that has um, lots of, Little uh, warnings. You know, let's look at this program. What do you think it does? Oh, I fooled you because it doesn't do that. Because you forgot this, and so on. And the simplest possible thing in that book is this thing with an L. Um, and there's a Java console that they have these days, and I can start it, but I'm not going to. And then here, I think the L is going to give me a, a problem uh, because Python does not recognize this one, but that's all right. And you know, I made my point, and you made your point. And I think that, uh, let me be clear, I'm biased towards I, because it's mathematical, and you say, but electronics, and I, I just realized, yes, I'm sorry, I completely forgot that electronics is cheating everywhere. I just completely forgot. And um, now it's up to you. You have two, you have the both worlds. Um, and I'm coming here and I'm gonna say, what is the next one? The next one is supposed to be this one. So I see text. And I do have a problem three, which is, I don't know why this problem kept me from writing it for almost a week. And even now it actually creates problems and it slows us down. This problem number three, the simplest problem in all of uh, the highlight screen. So out, out, and I go a text. Um, it's like, a, this, this problem is like a black hole. Just go in it, simple as it is, never come out of it. So please don't forget this is exercise, uh, example 2.4 in page 36. And, and this is the simplest possible thing, two times three, two times three, two times negative one, plus two times two on, and so on. So then I come back over here and I say, well, all right, fine. But at least, at least in the process of getting stuck on this problem and not ever getting to write it down, we introduce something good, which is we can write this properly. Um, properly and then more mathematical than, than maybe it was. And then I come back here and I say, you, uh, I'm always going to give you copy. Where's the copy? I don't even know. I don't want to copy the cell. I want to copy this thing. So if I do this, what is copy? So listen, I uh, don't have a sheet. copy right now. So I'm just going to do sheet. Insert. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Control C. So control C. 
and they can press shift and the mouse click and then you have Correct. And now this is the thing. Finally, this problem is the simplest possible problem that anybody can imagine has an answer. Good. And then in the in the mathematics over here, this is also the answer here. So you can confirm that everything is correct. And this is another thing that bothered me that slowed me down beyond belief because I had to calculate everything three times. And then I, I just uh, gave up, which was not good. I should have been more patient and more resilient. But I was. But now I kind of almost was. Um, so I got to go and say, where's the next one? The next one is question four. So again, you're going to have a little bit of a difficult time trying to find where I put them, but I put them where the lecture notes seem to be empty. And I added like this in a clear text, ASCII, so that you can just take this guy, instead of posting a notebook that you cannot use, just look at it and say, hmm, I wonder how you did that. Uh, now you can say, for example, get rid of this and add some text, put this in the text, run it, this is my um, question four. Could you calculate this? And remember that you're going to take this vector, 2, 3, i, 2, 3, i, the first one, and you multiply dot product with this one, and that gives you the first row, first column in the result. This is a matrix that has two rows, three columns. It will match in a multiplication with a three column, two rows matrices. matrix. So then you multiply this vector by this column, and you get the uh, lower left element in the resulting matrix because it's two, three times three, two, the answer would be two, two, uh, two rows, two columns. This is the, I say, look at definition 224 in uh, problem, which is um, definition 224. Uh, this is how matrices are being multiplied in case you forgot. That's what I just explained right now. Definition 224, what, what uh, exactly is that? I gave a number. What did I say about the number? Uh, page 36, did I skip that already? Page 36, yeah, I did. So please look back at uh, page 36 definition of such and such. Um, two, 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 three. This is how you do matrix addition and scalar multiplication. This is, we're still stuck in this problem. <clears throat> and then two to four, matrix multiplication with all this explanation. And then the answer, I'm sorry, the example that we are doing is this one. So in LaTeX, I said three ways of solving. You do NumPy, and then you do Wolfram Alpha, which is mathematical. And then you also could do this if you wanted, type this in. There was a time when I would type them. I don't, I don't have the time to type them now. But that's what's happening. 2 times 0 plus 3 times 0 plus i times 3. That's the first element because it's the first row and the first column. And it's the first top left corner in the thing. I'm done with this one. I'm going to go say that if you understand how this is done and you know where it is explained, you should always try to maybe consider typing calculating by hand. It's really good practice. Uh, and I'm coming back over here and I say, and I need exactly a, a code uh, cell. And I type it in and I see in beautiful mathematical notation, as opposed to electronics engineering notation, I see the answer. The answer is supposed to be uh, 3i, 38 minus 2i, 3, negative 23. So 3i, 38 minus 2i, 3, negative 23. Once again, 38 minus 2i, it's exactly the same. <clears throat> I'm coming over here and I say, in Wolfram Alpha, don't forget you can type this. But you may like this more or less, but that's the way you do it. Uh, it's meaningful, come on. Um, and they try to give it to you in uh, good human notation and so on. So <clears throat> now I just finished question four. Then I'm going to go to question five. Question five has a text, which I will show it to you in a second. Um, and um, and I, honestly, I'm just going to do this regardless if it takes me all of the time, uh, all the time. See, I, I'm doing the wrong thing now, close. Because because it takes us to, it, I'm, I'm, okay, so I'm going to continue doing this until I finish everything I posted, which it will take us to where we were yesterday. And then we can start growing. We can at least explain growing. We can read it, we can do it one day if we don't get to it uh, today. So I'm going to say, give me text. This question five, finally. Um, and, um, and now I'm going to say uh, the request is to calculate the um, product between this matrix and this matrix. The vector on the right is a matrix. It just only has one column. So then you have 2 by 2 times 2 by 1. That will give you a 2 by 1. Because the number of rows and number of columns, uh, sorry, number of um, columns on the first, on the left, and the number of rows on the right are going to cancel each other. So this example 2.7 on page 39. Great. I'm not going to look at it now. I'm going to look just to confirm the answer. 
and I'm going to say copy this, put it in the notebook, and uh, run this, and the answer is three negative two. And as I told you, I'm gonna come back here and say three negative two, see it? So example 2.7, which I said this is on page 39, uh, was properly calculated by us with NumPy. And I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna say, let's now do it in Wolfram Alpha. Now Wolfram Alpha does the same thing. And I get three negative two and I'm in good shape. So now I'm finally on question number six. The first thing about question number six is the actual <clears throat> text. Now I can't see what exactly the problem, unless you try to parse. But the best thing would be to just copy that and put it into a text uh, entry um, and then read it and then think about it. So I'm giving you hard to read stuff that you could have put into your notebook uh, and would look really beautiful. If I give you beautiful stuff, then you have to type it in. And that's just more work for you. Um, this is example 2.8 on page 39 and 40 in the book at home. Oh, this is something new. I have V1, V2. I don't have or just numbers. So as I keep saying, it's important for you to try to imagine what exactly calculations are you are supposed to do. I'm going to import the symbols and make V1, V2 just letters or names. So I'm gonna come back over here and I say, that's what I want. I push the button and I get negative V1, V2. In Wolfram Alpha, I'm going to do this. See, if, I, if I'm gonna say, again, I have the same problem here. Um, control C, I copied it. And then I put it over here. Um, you see what's happening. You appreciate the fact that I'm doing this for you and it will work for you that's just like it works for me, but who explains what to whom? Nobody, to no one. And uh, the benefit is for you to say, what did you say was this? And I say it's example 2.8 of page 3940. Purpose of these exercises is more than uh, to do what I'm doing right now. What I'm doing right now should give you faith. And then after you have this faith, oh, it works, I could do it two different ways. Then you go into the book, if you have time, and you study, and you know it, make it your own. So what was that again? Because I forgot this exercise, uh, page 39, 40, exercise example 2.8. So I'm going to go to 2.8. Consider what? Yeah, consider this and multiply it by some vector. Well, because multiplying M with V1, V2 produces negative V1, V2, he said, well, I can tell you that this is a reflection about the Y axis. So I say that wasn't obvious from what I did, but I was able to calculate and get his result. And so it, it, I don't think that in the end you can eliminate the booklet. The booklet is going to, say this one, the booklet is uh, going to help you because it explains it very well put together as well. Anyway, I'm gonna go say that this was exercise number six and I'm gonna do seven and then that finishes this batch of problems, but I haven't hit 14. So I'm going to say, uh, I finished six, right? With calculations, first time ever with uh, symbols. And then I copy this guy. See, yeah, I can copy it here. Yeah, okay, but this is a browser. And um, I'm going to ask for a text, put this guy in, pass and say, Look, two matrices, they are both 2, 2. Calculate MN and NM. Clearly, the purpose here is to indicate that in the large scheme of things, matrices, uh, when you multiply them, they associate, but they don't commute. So then um, I'm going to say, this is observation 2, 2, 8. OK, so again, I'm bothered by this period over here, probably two spaces. It put a period without me thinking. Um, and then it says on page 40. Great, except I don't have time to look at it just now. Let me show you what I have. I have two arrays, and then I'm going to try to multiply them, and then I do the same thing. So when I, but but uh, I print the both results. So when I put this in here, come on, uh, the first line is uh, empty, shouldn't be. Uh, and I run this, and I get two matrices. The first matrix is the M times N, and the next one is N times M. They are different, and that sort of proves what we discussed yesterday when I took two matrices, two gates, and I reversed them, and I said that the answer is going to be different if you do it uh, this way. Um, so I'm finished with this uh, chunk of exercises. And this was uh, July 2nd. So when I click, uh, next one is July 3rd, I have questions 8, 9, 10, and 11. So I should do that too, because I have already 14 and we are, uh, we are really taking up all the time today. But it's good that we do this and you see roughly what the topics are and we are moving slowly towards more um, conventional math than we had in the beginning. 
a while this state formalism for me at least remains still a very attractive proposition. Uh, but I, I trust that you sort of know it uh, by now and you could do it yourself and we're gonna do it together anyway. So I'm gonna say text, the question that I'm working with right now is question number eight. And when I do this, uh, it will say, please look at this matrix. I say, okay, I'm looking at it and I'm scared because the top right coordinate has e to the minus i times pi over five, Euler's formula, should help us. Do I need it? I'm not sure though. The good thing is that this is an example on a certain page in Martin's uh, booklet. So, so I want to say now, what is the complex conjugate? Yeah, and I go to also my part and take the minus from the correct. But complex conjugate says uh, here. Um, so this acts like a dictionary. You have the number that you had before, but you flip the sign of this imaginary part. So then they say, for example, say, wait a minute, I want a matrix. And what it says, just go ahead and do the complex conjugate for each arc. Oh, great, each arc, the complex conjugate. It's not the transpose conjugate. That is, make, take the transpose and then do the complex conjugate. What is the big deal with the transpose conjugate? Well, in a second, you'll find out. But for now, if the answer is, what's the complex conjugate of a matrix? You have to create a matrix with the elements being complex conjugates of the elements in the original matrix. So I'm going to say, uh, that's the problem, right? But well, here's how you do it. It will boil down consistently, but you have to know how to do it by hand just to be sure that the math done by the computer now is not wrong. Or maybe you call the wrong procedure or who knows what, okay? So by hand is also useful. Um, and I'm gonna say, okay, this is the code. Mm -hmm. And suddenly you realize that it, it's not that easy to compare because the one is the one, the three plus i, you see that it's three plus i because the three minus i changed the sign on the imaginary part. 10 doesn't have an imaginary part. Now you don't know if e to the minus i pi over five is in fact 0 0.8 plus i 0 0.58, but apparently it is. And so you see, the problem is that this guy did not uh, keep the E ex exponential and it's just converted it. And now you could be a little bit um, worried. <clears throat> In the Wolfram Alpha version, I said, you could, just, uh, you could just type this. Oh, of course I have two Wolfram Alpha things here. So if I come back here and I say, could you give me the complex conjugate of this guy, which is the matrix that we talked about, they will keep See, they will keep the, the exponential uh, notation. It says one, three minus i, and then the, in, the negative uh, comes and goes in front of i because that's where the only imaginary part is. This is time for us to go in here and say, which, which example did we say this was? 216 on page 48, let me just check. So we are now on page 42, let's go to 48. Again, don't skip over these. Performing a refraction by the x-axis and then y-axis is kind of related to the previous exercise. 48, I'm gonna go to 48. I think it's a beautiful document, you know, which uh, gives you lots of food for thought. And uh, 48 is PM. Yeah. And now the question was, um, what do you do when you take the uh, complex conjugate? So um, uh, this is the input, sorry. And so you take the minus becomes plus and you put a plus for this guy over here. And what did we do? We got the same thing, put a plus, and then you have a plus over here. But then you say, but this guy doesn't keep, or at least I don't know how to do it, to keep the, the exponential. So I said, don't worry, you could calculate e to that with Wolfram Alpha to make sure that what you're looking at is in fact the calculated version of, of that exponent. So what's e to the power of negative whatever? And the answer is, <clears throat> 0 0.80 blah 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 minus 0 0.5877. And if you look into your answers, it's the same, the same numbers. So numerically you can confirm that this is what it is, and all the minus it become plus, all the minus become minus, and that's complex conjugate, complex conjugate, no transpose yet. And we don't know what the transpose conjugate might be about. So I'm gonna go into nine and I say also look up transpose and conjugate transpose, for example. Look at 218 on page 49. I'm not gonna do that, but you can. Um, I did it last night just to make sure that uh, I know where they are and so on. So I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to say 
Um, although I told you to, to look at transpose and to look at conjugate transpose, okay, because we only did conjugate, um, then the thing is calculate the inner product. But that's super easy. I times two plus two plus I times negative one, right? So when you calculate the, the, the inner product, you just take the individual components, multiply them and sum up everything. Um, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say, how do I do this? It's very simple. This is kind of like a waste of time exercise because it's too simple. And um, when you do this, um, the, the AI sort of figure this out from the end, from the statement, it suggests, it gives you suggestions that basically match by 95% what, what you have to do for so these little exercises anyway. So I'm going to say shift insert and I run it. And I get negative two plus one j, and I didn't convert it into any math notation. So it's negative two plus i. But what was this again? Two nineteen on page fifty one. So I come back here. I'm going to say fifty one. Where are you? Fifty one. Fifty one is right here, and it's negative two minus i. Is that what I said? Negative uh, plus i. Negative two. Okay, so it's. 2i plus minus 2 minus i. So it should be negative 2 plus i. So what is the deal here? If we have this i 2 plus i and 2 negative 1, is that what I have? Uh, then when I multiply, it's, it's negative 2 negative i. But that doesn't seem to be the case here because it's. Uh, it takes a negative i. I but I think that the problem here is incorrectly calculated. So then maybe we found an error here. Just some negative. That's the problem. So two times i plus negative two. See, I think there's no minus i. He may have meant a, a negative i here. But now we found an error. We can write to Martin and say, ha ha, and he's not going to fix it. But because it's a very old document, so probably like this. But clearly, this is negative i. Right, and so we have a problem. We found an error. I think it's good to find errors because then you feel like you're in control. But I challenge anybody to tell me why there's not an error. So two negative i uh, should be two i, and then you have minus two minus so i. If it does the negative conjugate, then it's i, then it is minus i. Okay, but why does it do that? Because it does the same by two. So he does the same I thing. Then this is the wrong. Uh, yeah. This is the wrong what? So he does some of the negative conjugate. Then, 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 what I'm telling you is actually um, incorrect. So he says, if you take the inner product and you are dealing with complex numbers, you have to make sure that the first vector is in fact uh, transposed and then complex conjugate, and then you multiply it like two matrices, and then you get the result. So I think this deserves a little bit of a discussion. What is happening over here? Um, and why do I have to take, so take the inner product of two vectors, that's the bra and ket notation, so to speak. Uh, first, take the complex conjugate and multiply each of the corresponding numbers in both vectors and then add everything. So then if, you have, if this were a real vectors, then we wouldn't do any of that, but there wouldn't be any complex conjugates, but there are. So, so we have to read this carefully because uh, it turns out there is no mistake. It's just that we got too fast and uh, I'm going to have to fix this. So it's division kind of. So not dot. I shouldn't do the dot here. See, I I just um. I'm just gonna say just multiply. Well, I don't want to multiply. I need to if it's complex numbers. I have to use the conjugate uh, versions of the numbers. Um, but when I did this here, I said um. So the question is, what should I do? I clearly I can't use dots, right? And so that's why you really have to read, understand what the definition is. So if you take AB multiplied by CD, the answer is AC plus BD. That's not what we are doing here. Okay, so I think I'm gonna mark this down. I'm gonna say, well, watch out. Um, but watch out what um, he says about when, when we have complex numbers, when the vectors, have um, complex uh, components. Okay, so so we're gonna have to come back to this one and say the dot product is not gonna work. Uh, I need something else that will include the transpose conjugate. 
which finally is making uh, our um, is making our um, is making the way into our discussion. So this is a little bit of a this is a failure. Question nine. Uh, the way we solved it with dot doesn't give the right answer on account that we didn't take into account the fact that this is a column vector. It should be transposed. And then it should be, so you should make this a matrix of one line, two columns so that you can multiply it and it should be uh, uh, conjugate. So that you would multiply it. So one line, two columns, transpose it and then conjugate it and multiply with a um, Two, two rows, one column, so that the result would be a number. And so I am going to say well, whatever. Uh, we need to re review this. So let's go to question 10. I have to do question 14. And it looks like this has taken all the time, but uh, we still, I still have something to, to state about that uh, robot. Yield. So I'm going to come back here and I say, darn, this was very time consuming, wasn't it? And we still have there's 18 questions and we're going over an entire section. So uh, this is a text that I have, and I say, would you please do the same thing for i, i, and one, negative one? So I suspect that I've done the same mistake. I use dot, and that doesn't look good. And so instead of dot, I'm supposed to use uh, transpose i, i, where it looks uh, one line, negative i, negative i, and then multiply it with this. But guess what? Here, it doesn't matter because these two vectors are orthogonal. So... So lucky me, even though I didn't use the right formula, I get the same answer, zero. So the, the inner product with two vectors is zero, then the two vectors are orthogonal. And in this case, it doesn't matter, but I'm not gonna put it in here because I have to rework it. So I'm gonna come back to this place and uh, skip this. I'm gonna go to question 11 and I finally, um, wait, not finally. And question 11, I'm working on the following uh, exercise. Could you calculate? Um, this is an exercise that we talked about with Christina and during office hour about two weeks ago. How long is the vector randomly we picked one? One, negative two, and i. So this is on page 50, 54. And if I go to page 54, I'm on 51. Again, it's it's based to read everything slowly, slowly, maybe a page or two per day and so on. And when I go to 54, the answer here is how long is this vector? You have two options in here. The first option is to use the norm from the linear algebra package. And that will say that it's some number. And you're going to say, I don't recognize this number. And that's OK. Although you could say, oh, in my mind, I calculate 244 times 244. That's almost 6, maybe. And then you can say, in Wolfram Alpha, I should have this to calculate. And I put it over here. And it turns out that uh, they, they are more symbolic than us. <clears throat> and then if I have the norm of this guy, it's square root of 6. Well, hey, I'm very happy about this. I come over here and I say, now ask NumPy what is square root of six, and if you find something like 244, then you know you've got everything correctly. Although it's more oriented towards numbers than uh, symbolic real processing. See, the same number. Okay, good. so I have 11, and now finally, this was on 7.3. If I go on 7.4, there was no class of 7.4, but I put here three problems, which are finally the problems for, for the purpose and the reason of motivation for why this chapter is in fact here. So question two, I'm um, sorry, I jumped the gun again. Um, question two says, okay, now that you know what the norm is, could you normalize this? In some sense, this is why we're here, because we use in this states unnormalized vectors. And uh, there's a formula to calculate the probability. And then you say, why is that formula there? And the reason is we normalize and we get the amplitudes and then we square them and add them up. So. so question two says, please normalize. And I say, sure, sure, no problem. I'm going to ask for a text, put this guy in here. Um, and um, I don't know if you like uh, Mississippi State formalism more than this, or you like this more than that. Uh, but at some point, as I said, it has to. We have to become aware of all of this. This is an optional assignment. Who gets my assignments? In the end, this is real. And so now here we are. We just spend time on this, and I try to give enough exposure to that booklet. But we'll come back to the Mississippi State formalism and cover everything with uh, Mississippi State. So then, two fifty, two twenty-five on page fifty-five. I'm going to go to this place. Page 55 is right here, and it says normalize it. So what do you do? You calculate the norm, and you divide every element by the norm. Um, what I have here, though, is this. Uh, copy this, put it here, and type it in. So what's going to do is going to give me two numbers. Is this the right numbers? It depends. I'm also going to say normalize this guy. And... Um, uh, 
Now, basically, we rely more and more on actual names or procedures that uh, Mathematica is putting forth. I like this much better. It's one over square root of five, negative two over square root of five. Uh, this looks kind of the same thing. But how do I know? So you have to calculate things. And uh, uh, so I do this here. What if I calculate one over square root of five and negative two over square root of five? And it turns out it's the same thing. And again, I have the same problem. If, if it doesn't want to keep the square roots, uh, then I'm just going to have to prove to myself that the numbers that I'm calculating uh, in the end are basically the ones that come out of the square roots that uh, are the, uh, my, my, my calculation or all from alpha would give me. So I finally get to the questions that I like. Question 13 says, please tell me if this is a unitary matrix. You say, oh, but I recognize the gate X. It has to be. I was, I was told all the gates in quantum computing are unitary matrices, actually. The answer is yes. What is the unitary matrix? And it says here that the matrix is unitary if its inverse is its transpose conjugate. And so you can come, uh, what is a unitary matrix? And hopefully I get the same answer. It says a square matrix is unitary if UH is the inverse, but UH denotes a conjugate transpose. Suddenly conjugate transpose becomes relevant. Take the matrix, transpose it, and then conjugate every single element. If that matrix is your inverse of the original matrix, then the matrix you started from is unitary. So I'm going to come back here as we square. So is this? Yes, it is. What am I supposed to do? Guess what? You have to multiply it with the complex, uh, with the transpose conjugate. So I'm going to come back over here and I say, uh, now I don't trust the dot that much. On the other hand, the dot is doing the job because there's a conjugate here and a T transpose um, argument. So take the X conjugate and then transpose it and multiply it with X. There you go. So you are supposed to take care of the, your own conjugate uh, thing. So for example, if I were to say, what was the problem for me earlier? Uh, in here, I should actually say, um, NP conjugate this guy and then take the transpose, probably. And then uh, I forgot what the answer was on that one. Okay, but that was a possibility, right? So negative two plus I, is that what it was? Uh, this is answer on 51, let's go to 51. See if we get, if we done, if we done it properly or not. 51, come on 51, where are you? So minus two minus i. Still, we didn't get it right, but we got a negative two now, I guess. So <clears throat> minus two minus i. So we didn't do it properly because we conjugated the wrong one. If you don't mind, I'm going to say um, I take v and do that. So v. Okay, just a second. Um, do v over here. And then multiply that with W. Let's see if that gives me, I got it right. But you have to read to be sure that what I did here, which are three different things, you know, I'm not randomly trying to match an exercise that's been solved in a book. Of these three things, two of them are wrong. And we should know ahead of time which ones are wrong and only do the right one. So I, um, I'm, I basically uh, finished this, but only now because I did comments on again, I say, do you agree with me? Yes, because this is the, the unit uh, matrix. So I'm going to say, what's the next one? And he says here, when you're looking, whatever those matrices are, says these guys are going to become your best friends. True. These guys are going to become the, your best friends. And um, I'm going to take you that page. And that's where we finish the exercises for today. He says, um, after all sorts of things, um, it says, look at these matrices, X, Y, C, uh, the following matrices, which will soon become your best friends, are unitary. So I did X. Well, let's do Y, which we haven't seen yet. We did see Z. We haven't seen R. R is coming up for uh, W entangled states and general rotations. And then what do we not have here? S, which is another matrix that uh, is going to be useful in, um, um, in the GAZ game. So Christina was asking yesterday, 
what, where else can I find puzzles of the kind you showed in class? And I have some puzzles by myself, but I also want to point out some things. If you go into Qubit, uh, let's go to Palmer Wong. So Palmer Wong, I guess. Maybe, hopefully you will find it, no? Um, that's something, Palmer Wong. Uh, Sites, the book, quantum. And so it's Thomas Wong back next. Mm -hmm. Sorry about this. I don't want to go to the thing. I'm going to come back over here and I want you to go to the cubic touchdown. So when you go to cubic touchdown, you can do the game board yourself. And I bet, I, I guess what I would like to clarify here is apparently um, all these transitions are correct. And in principle, uh, it's a good exercise. Like we start in the beginning, you know, where we prove that if you start from white, with X, you go to black. And then from white with H, you go to plus, And from black with H, you go to minus. And in between plus and minus, you go with Z. And that was a simple um, rectangle of transitions both ways. And this is more than just that, re that rectangle. We include square root of naught, see, right here. And I think that this is an excellent place, I mean, things to try to prove either with misty states or using uh, matrices. Um, lots of uh, all these transitions are, are good because they're part of this game. And then you should try to understand what they are and how you can prove them, either with matrices like yesterday or with this state formulas. So this is, this is, I think, the first source of many small puzzles. These are all one cubic gates. Um, and you can then also ask yourself, can I visualize these things on the block sphere? And the answer is you can. So <clears throat> I'm going to go to question 14, where for the first time I'm asking for a matrix I haven't seen yet that has uh, complex numbers inside. So um, I'm going to go with the text, and I'm going to put this here. And now I say, where, where is, why is the text there? It's a mistake, so I'm going to bring it uh, down. Sorry, down, down, down. Right here becomes the last thing in the thing. The question 14 now is the last one. This is some code. I'll take it out for now. This is a part of the same example, 67. This is a matrix. I wonder if this matrix is, in fact, unitary. Well, if it's unitary, that the conjugate transpose of this guy should be its inverse. Inverse means that if I multiply that matrix by this one, I get the identity matrix. So very simple expression, exactly as before. Please multiply y with the conjugate of y and then transpose of that. And that concludes our um, plus code. And there's nothing else left of today. So we still didn't do Grover, but Grover is in QBSAP. And uh, we can do it on uh, Monday. And then we do super dust coding. And then we can do uh, teleportation. We have the guest lecture. And then we can do teleportation. And then we have the last week to do GAC. And also explain what exactly is Shor's algorithm. Where can you find it? Uh, what's the VQE? Uh, what's QAOA and what other applications that are more realistic than what we discussed so far are people working on? <clears throat> so because this is untitled 9, I'm just going to say July 12th in class. And this nobody needs this uh, notebook um, because I build it from things that exist in the, in the notes. And therefore, I can post it as it is, as a reference. And if people get stuck, then they can tell me and the thing will be fine. So file, and I'm gonna say, okay, let me just first say that this guy should have that name. So I hit enter. And then I say file, download notebook right here. <laughs> and I have it somewhere, like here. Okay, this guy is in front of me. I'm gonna say, click on the folder, minimize this, put July 12 in class here. Then come back here and say, let me post this where it should be. And I go on the, I guess, summer 20, something students, go to students, find Guru, because Guru is where we collect everything. Click students and nothing. There's Guru right here. I have a week four in it. Click week four. I posted a bunch of things in there. Now more things. Add file. Okay. Again, this guy is exactly where it's supposed to not be. Say, choose your files. Click. And now I'm supposed to go under this PC. I uh, start another tour. C and then users and then the German. And then I go into desktop because otherwise I can get into the desktop that they show me. And this is the thing I want to upload. And whatever the annotation, I push the button and it goes in. And week four now has two notebooks, one of which is this one that has 14 problems out of the 18. 
um, which, the way we just did it, okay? So I want some calculation and then all the problems one by one. Oh, and I have this thing. I hate this and I'm gonna fix it on my own. What exactly is going on with question number two that it comes out so incorrectly? I have an extra dollar sign messed up or what? I don't have any, any. Okay. This is fine, but for some reason, um, in here it's messed up. That shouldn't be. It's a um, question two. Why is question two messed up? It's a plus. Why is that plus? Um, shouldn't be a plus. I uh, know it should be a plus, not a, 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 a period. So I got something wrong and I don't know why, and I'm going to fix this uh, later. There's an extra dollar sign. It shouldn't be here. Um, oh, I hate this, but I'm not going to fix it right now. So then I go through this, and uh, these are all the things that we discussed, including the comments saying you get to this in Baltimore Alpha. And then we go all the way to the end where I have this matrix that produces uh, the unit matrix. And that's the end of today's class. So um, since we postponed Rover again and again and again, remember that the week started with Rover as explained by uh, Will Oliver at MIT. And we have a small version of Rover with two qubits and we should look at it. And then we can discuss on Monday in maybe 30 minutes, choose a configuration. What would you want the queen uh, card to be? And then, uh, implement that oracle and then write the whole circuit, trace it to make sure that it's the exact same thing. And today I was going to ask which one is the configuration you want us to discuss and then do exactly that. And then this, that, that is so time consuming, even though we did it so fast, um, took over. And uh, we ended up doing this in the, uh, all of the lecture, plus it's time to do today. So I'm finished. Um, and now I'm going to say, I still have seven people. I'm going to write them down. Uh, I have Ahmad, and then I have Blake, and then I have Carla, and um, I'm going to say, uh, Christian, Christina, Scott. I don't know. Uh, if somebody else was here, they may have disconnected. Yes. Uh, the good thing is that when I started this whole thing and I was recording, and I sort of mentioned the people that uh, that joined, and then I have Elmar in front of me, and that's it. So, any questions? Uh, we have two appointments: one at twelve thirty, Ashish, we're not here, um, and the other one at two p.m. No, no, no. Um, Three yes. Points. Two, two, twelve, thirty-two, and then at six we have Christian. Stop. I stop sharing. I'm at two, right? Yes, I yes. Put it in the right. Okay. I look forward to it. So, <laughs> so then when I go here, there's only Emma who's reading the book. Right here. No, right there. Boom. There am I. Gosh. Don't do that. Privacy. Privacy first. Kiss it. There's the back. Show them the front cover. The front cover. <clears throat> What's the front cover of that book? Front. Yeah, front, front. See? Yeah. It's a, ah. a kitty bird, I guess. The pocket guy to kiss it. I don't know how to fit the. Yeah. But I can, I can go like, like this, you know. I have to say, it made me laugh when you zoomed in on him during Maria's lecture. <laughs> I did, and, and it looked good, really. <laughs> because he was just explaining, and it looked good. Yeah. Well, oh, he was the only one in here. We have a German last name, right? Many people have actually German last names, and you have us, too. Like me. Yeah, I mean, and you, too. You have, <laughs> you have German's last name, and then there is the... Deutsch algorithms. So it's perfect. Oh, I see. Yes. Carla, you have a German last name. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody, and I will see you later. Okay. Have a good day. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bye. Have a good day. See Bye. you later. Bye. So I say yes.